Hey, welcome to Rolling Review, where we talk about all things nerdy and awesome. I'm Jim. And I'm Alex. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, welcome to the Rolling Review show uh, today on the 3rd. We're excited to be with you today, as uh, we have plenty to talk about. Uh, so the very first thing, let's just talk about our upcoming events, projects. Um, very first thing, I said this last time, um, we're getting real close to starting our live stream D&D game uh, from session zero to level 20 so uh, that should be starting within the next two weeks um so that's exciting uh, and yeah we're gonna we're gonna have an interesting party which uh which means we're gonna get into a whole bunch of shenanigans and whatnot so yeah that's, that's pretty much that yeah there was a couple big news pieces this week when or might have been last week at this point. One of the big ones is uh, Ben Affleck has dropped out of the running to be uh, the director of the Batman, which I know, at least for me personally, this is just one of the last things I want to see happen to the DC universe because I have no confidence in them anymore. After this dropout, it just reeks of me of studio meddling and they're just making it impossible for anyone else. And DC hasn't proven that they should give notes because all decisions they've made have sucked. I was going to say, because DC has totally given us, you know, proper trust in them to do the right thing when it comes to, when it comes yeah. to their movies. Yeah. So it just, I don't know. I'm just real tired of having any sort of confidence in the DC universe because I think it's just going to fall flat at this point. There's nothing left. I think the only shot they have of still maintaining some semblance of a universe is if they make sure they don't lose Ben Affleck over this drama and they keep him as, you know, Batman, because if he's gone, then it's all going to fall. If he stays, there's at least a chance that Jeff Johns and John Burgo kind of get their crap together uh, and <laughs> get, th get things rolling in a, in a good direction as opposed to, you know, Batman versus Superman or Suicide Squad. Well, well, they have to prove it to me. Like we are, we're coming probably closer to the end of the golden age of comic book movies. So they either better get the crap together, or they're gonna miss it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they don't want to be like Marvel, but you know, they're not gonna take the time to set up a, a nice universe. So it's, they're they're gonna miss it. There's no way they're missing. They're missing. They're not. There's just, but. <laughs> If you want to call this a positive, Suicide Squad is officially an Oscar-nominated movie. Yes, How the shit the is it. that possible? Like, what Suicide the crap? Squad. Okay. It's for, hair, it's for hair and makeup, so it's not that important. But the fact that a movie like that is getting an Oscar nod is just... No. It validates no. their crap. It doesn't. It really doesn't. <laughs> It just... uh, to our viewers, what do you think? Let us know. I'm we're watching the chat, so if you got anything to say, please let us know because I think this is this is total BS. Uh, I it mean, is. Yeah, hair and makeup, sure. Uh, Killer Croc looked good. I mean, I guess with uh... all the crap you put into the Joker's makeup, I the only one so. I think looked kind of good was El Diablo. Sure, him too. I mean, it takes a lot of time to do all that, but. Oscar worthy? Oh, no. So. no, definitely not. Just uh there's so many other things like going on. Like there's a bunch of period pictures like from the sixties where the hair and makeup was kind of big, like hidden figures and stuff like yes. that. Like, no, this should not have no. I'm just, I I absolutely agree. Uh it's not uh, worth the Oscar. <laughs> no, not even close. But, but the one yeah. I was just gonna say, but what upsets me more is Deadpool isn't even a nominee for Oscar for writing or anything like that. Come on. Yeah. The only thing that, I mean, because I don't know if it for screenplay, maybe adapted screenplay because trying to take everything is hard, but the story was really simple. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, it was. I mean, which I'm, I'm glad it was for the movie's sake because let's be honest, if they tried getting too complicated and fancy with Deadpool they're going to screw it up. Like, yeah. you know, sewing his mouth shut or something like that. Yeah. But, but I just, I, I think I, he's deserving of an Oscar. Yeah. Though I just kind of wonder uh, 
where you have to draw the line for writing when you know a good deal of that movie was improvised and how much of a movie can be improv before you have to take away the writing because it wasn't writing at that point. Yeah, I think that's that's probably a fair uh, fair critique because even uh, the scenes with the cabbie driver, um, T.J. Miller and Ryan Reynolds scenes, yeah. and I'm, and a whole bunch of things because Ryan Reynolds is pretty good on his feet. They were all in, yeah. improv, and so you know that's I, I guess that's a fair critique on why not the writing for them because well yeah. you know they probably didn't even write down half their lines so no, they probably didn't. They just said, do it again, do it again, do it again. Be funny, do it again, do it again. <laughs> nah, that one was too dirty. We can't put that in the movie, even with an R rating. Not do it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how could they uh, put something that's just as bad or even worse than what they did? <laughs> I mean, fr- from some of the interviews, apparently that did happen, especially with T.J. Miller and... And Ryan Reynolds, that they went, oh. we can't even put that in a rated R movie. Stop it. Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I believe that. Oops. But there has I been a thing. Too. As far as I'm concerned, I think Deadpool is still searching for its uh, director. Mm. Yeah. We do it real quick. I mean, just let Ryan Reynolds do it all. It's fine. Oh, he, he, that, he'll handle it. It's fine. Sorry. No. <laughs> the new director is officially uh, David uh, Lech, who is the director of John Wick. So oh. that actually is that actually is very exciting because I don't know if you saw John Wick, but the action in that movie was amazing. So hopefully we can actually get some really good action scenes going in there and keep the humor with Ryan Reynolds. So I hope it's going to be a good movie. Oh, I hope so, too. But, you know, I won't put it past Fox to mess something up. You know, they were so solid with it, with X-Men. And then, yeah. you know, we end it with, like, X3. So. Yeah. But let's see. Uh, <laughs> so, though we get X3 and X-Men Origins and Apocalypse, it looks pretty awesome, does it not? Logan does look awesome. I'm actually really excited for that movie. It it's gonna be fan it's gonna be fantastic. Uh, I yeah. can't wait to see X twenty three. I can't wait to see Old Man Logan. I I know unfortunately it probably means the end of an era with Hugh a, Jackman. A cussing uh, a cussing Professor X. A cussing Professor X. <laughs> Heck yeah. Yes. But to that regard, though, one Hugh Jackman said he won't rule out a Deadpool versus Wolverine movie. Which I'm happy about. I'm extremely happy about that because, yes. oh my gosh, that would be, that would probably be the greatest uh, Fox film ever made, oh, you know, comic book wise. Well, we'll see. It, I, I hope it's be good, but we'll see. Greatest? That's hard. There's Out of the comic book ones? X2. Yeah, that's that's the one you have to beat. That's it. It's not like against all the re- rest of the Marvel movies where you're like, oh, you have to beat, you know, Civil War, Winter Soldier, all like at basically the entire catalog. And you're just like, you basically you're like, yeah, you have to beat X2. First and class for- was good, but it wasn't amazing. I, I liked it. I thought it was really good. It, again, it was good. It just wasn't amazing, mind-blowingly great movie. I'm still holding out, but I think this uh this Logan movie is gonna be the closest thing we'll get to a Last of Us movie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like the last shot in the trailer is basically a shot from The Last of Us. Yeah, that's true. Which, you know, if if that's what they stick to, you know, I'm okay with that because we all know how awesome uh video game movies are, right? <laughs> Hey, okay, not at all, but terrible. No. Oh. Oh, God. That's that's depressing to think about. It really is. They, they had so many prospects. It could have been so good. And Wait, it wasn't. The, what, the Warhammer movie, Assassin's Creed? I'm like, World of Warcraft. No, World of Warhammer. Warcraft, sorry. I, both games I don't play, so I always get... 
the best comic book movie is still dun 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 dun. <laughs> Mortal Kombat. Yes. Dun, dun, dun. That's an absolutely ridiculous movie. Oh gosh, that that movie completely ridiculous, but still like the best video game movie there is. So, <laughs> yeah, that's a real low bar to hit. It's a point. real low bar to hit. Uh, <laughs> well, it's not as bad as like you know the live action Dragon Ball movie. So. <sighs> Stop. <laughs> I'm about to mute. Don't bring that. I'm about to mute you. Don't bring that crap up here. You know, at the end of this, we're just going to list off our most hated movies with the ones that uh, the ones oh. that we just don't speak of. Never had. Uh. Um, but moving on. Um, uh. So a little bit of news out of Nintendo with the Switch. So, yes, we've known about the um, launch titles like Zelda coming out. But the thing we Skyrim, Skyrim, but the things we were worried about, <laughs> a, a terrible catalog behind it. If that's really the only games that are going to be out, they they announced eighty games uh, that are going to be released on the platform over the next like year and a half. I think till next Christmas, um, or the, no, the Christmas after that, or something like that. Um, so, but eighty games. That's actually a pretty decent amount to build a build a game catalog on yeah it's still ugh. i just nintendo after the wii u was a really good step up from what it was but they still seem to can't really get away from the ds so i'm still waiting i think this uh this new zelda game is a step in the right direction but them like dc they have to earn my trust i'm not just gonna hand it to them yeah, at this point yeah i mean i I don't think they'll ever get away from the DS because it is a. No, I'm not saying they. It's right, right, no, but it's you know it's a it's a tested successful system, and and when talking, I watched a a video from uh, was it Game Theories, uh, great channel by the way, um, they he, he did like a debate with the CEO of Nintendo, and his, the CEO's whole point was that you know they're. They're innovators. They always do something new, and you know they're at the forefront of motion capture and all these different things. And that's what the Switch is. It's the next innovation forward. But honestly, I think they would probably be better off just on their company, um, as, as a company itself, saying, you know what, we're done with consoles. Consoles aren't working for us. We'll license games out to both Sony and Microsoft, the Xbox and PlayStation. And then just focus real hard on handheld because they're the leaders in handheld. They're destroying everybody oh, yeah. else in handheld. When we think of Game a Boy. handheld gaming system, we, we have Game Nintendo. Boy. Yeah, G Game Boy and the DS because I don't think the DS is technically a Game Boy. No. So, but the first thing, the first thing they come up, you get Pokemon. Is the first handheld thing you think of? That's exactly. No, uh, no, not even close. And so it's it's one of those things. That, they were debating and he was like, yeah, innovation. I'm like, you can be innovators in the games and by demanding that Sony and Microsoft, you know, amp up their councils to meet your games, which will be huge sellers because of our love for Nintendo, especially with games like Zelda and whatnot. But yeah, I mean, come on, like you, they weren't doing well with the, uh, Wii U, uh, just the Wii. Both of those are pretty terrible sellers. They only sold like like thirty million Wiis and like and, yeah. fifteen million Wii U's. We, which which sucks because the Wii U was actually pretty decent. The Wii U was, especially with their titles like the uh, the level editor for Super Mario Brothers and uh, the Super Smash Brothers for it was good. Oh yeah, no doubt. I'm not saying it's a bad system. It's just not what people. It's not what the bulk of console gamers want. And with a no. with a shift to PC gaming, uh, especially since Steam has become so big and centralizing basically every game we want to play on the computer, and then the consoles like PlayStation, who get it like for the four, did like 80 million in sales, and the Xbox, who did like 60 or 70 million. Like they're just not 
they're not even in the same market. No, you know, they're selling, they sold as many like we use as they sold Dreamcast back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Second Dreamcast. That's okay. You brought this up earlier, so we will end the show. You have to say, Jim, the movie you wish could be a race three. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, we don't talk about the uh, Christmas special, Star Wars. That's a good one. That's uh, a good that one. One's, I mean, it's a made-for-TV movie, but I mean, when you really think of a movie that was just so terrible... I mean, Lucas, like, for a while was buying up VHSs of this movie to destroy them so no one ever have to see it again. The only thing that made it out of that movie was Boba Fett. Nothing made it out of that movie. Don't kid yourself, ever. Boba Fett first showed up in the Christmas special. Ugh. He is the only thing that was premiered in that that made it out of that movie. Everything else that premiered in that died with that. What? You mean Life Day isn't canon? <laughs> it might be canon, but no one talks about it. Yeah, oh God, don't bring that up. Ugh. Life day, wonderful shut, life day. Shut your mouth. You're about to get <laughs> muted. <laughs> Why'd I give you that power? <laughs> <laughs> I was foolish for that. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, a movie that no one talks about. Like, the epitome of bad movie. Not even entertainingly bad would be just bad alex what what do you got the last airbender really yes took one of the greatest shows that nickelodeon has produced and made an utterly abomination it, it's a failure in casting it's a failure in writing it's a failure in plot it's a failure as an adaption it's a failure to acting it's just overall abysmal plus they sequel bait at the end of it which is oh it's so garbage yeah, they, they they really spent like everything like let's just make it look interesting with water moving and all these things. like let's just and make it, it look, look cool. And that they didn't. It no. You watch the show and you see the single earthbender doing these amazing things with rocks and everything, and then the movie it takes ten of them to move a boulder. Just like Rip. that. <laughs> riveting yeah i mean even right now I, I think i fell asleep for a second in there yeah it's they took everything that was good about avatar and said nope screw you we're making it all bad the mysteriousness of the the head of the fire nation the fire lord they just show his face and he looks so unintimidating they have the main villain of season one is Asif Mamvi from the goddamn Daily Show. They took fire bed, they took fire bending and made it just kind of like water bending should be. It just it's so stupid. Yeah, that's fair. They 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 turned Appa and turned him into where the wild things are. Just oh god. But you mean Appa wasn't supposed to be like that? No, they took Ang's. Okay, they can't even say Ang's name right. God's sakes. And they took his awesome triangle tattoo and made it a henna tattoo. Yeah, that was dumb. Just like, there was no qualifying, there's like no redeeming factor of this movie whatsoever. There is one redeeming factor. They didn't make no. a second one. Okay. <laughs> oh, and, and they made, and they made the, uh, the water tribe princess with the, with the dick hair. Oh gosh, I remember that. Yeah, I totally, oh, I totally oh, forgot about, so about that. Thanks for reminding me. I'm honestly not sure which one of us is which one of our movies is worse. They're both abominations they, in their own right. They're both horrible. You know what? Uh, Here's what we'll I'm do: gonna, we'll put them I'm together, saying, throw them in a fire pit, and send them to hell. My only argument to say that mine is worse was mine was released theatrically. <laughs> that's that's fair and, and was expected to be a hit and was expected to be a hit that's fair but when it comes to cinematically mine is backed by is actually is surrounded by two absolutely fantastic sci-fi movies the new hope and empire empire being like the greatest sequel it is 
It is. There's so, so it's just like this abomination of a turd right in the middle of greatness. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you that. Uh, <laughs> all, all right, right. I, think, I think we'll call it on that one. Absolutely. Well, if you uh, like this video or like any of our other videos, please hit that subscribe down, button down below. Please hit that like button. We really appreciate it. Uh, tell us what, you, what your thoughts are in the, in the comments section about the different movies, the Oscars, all of that. Um, really appreciate you coming. Uh, keep an eye out for the D&D game. That should be coming out in about two weeks. So pretty, pretty excited. Uh, pretty much most of what we talk about, we have links to on our Facebook page because uh, we share a whole bunch of stuff there. So check that out. Um, and yeah, thanks for coming.